I recently read the book Love Style Life by Garant Storé. Maybe I pronounced that right. Maybe I totally didn't. Um, yeah, and here's a little sneak peek. When in doubt, just get there late. What are some photos? There she is. There's Garance. Garance. Yeah, anyway. Lots of pictures and illustrations. This is more of an autobiography than a style book. It's somewhat personal. She describes philosophies that have worked for her in life. You'll learn more about Garance than you will about style. And when she talks about style, a lot of it is in a more conceptual way. It's interesting reading about her. I had heard of her around 2008, 2009 when she started dating Scott Schumann, creator of the Sartorialist Fashion Photography blog. But I honestly never was a reader of her blog and I didn't know much about her until I read this book. I see this book as being in the personal essay category. It's made up of a lot of personal experiences, which makes sense as that style is synonymous with blog writing. Some things I liked about the book, uh, she was a tomboy and tends to dress in a gender neutral style like me. There's even a section on how to wear a tuxedo for women. She loosely defines what a tuxedo is and advocates wearing it in lieu of a gown. I thought this was creative and definitely a look that's not usually brought up in women's style books. She explains that even black tie events these days have attendance with very loose interpretations of the dress code. So if you want to look too cool for the party while still being polite to your hosts, the tux is your best friend. I like this concept and it inspires me to start my search for a well-fitting suit. I've always been drawn toward suiting and tailoring on women for myself because it's sharp and powerful. Garant says to editor-in-chief of Vogue Paris, Emmanuelle Alt, you don't really wear evening gowns and I'm similar. I don't like dresses either. Emmanuelle responds, for me, femininity is in no way tied to wearing a dress or a skirt. I think you can be incredibly feminine in pants. I love this quote because even though I've gone through phases of wearing skirts and dresses, I've always preferred pants. I feel most myself in pants. Well, after years of studying photos of Andy McDowell and trying to rock the curl, I've realized that when I set my hair free, it takes over. Going short is a pretty cathartic experience. I hadn't really thought about it, but I found myself close to tears. I had a really similar experience to Garan's uh, when I cut my hair from long to short about a year and a half ago. I was nervous and I had a mini panic attack during the cut and I captured some of it um, on video, but most of it, uh, my nerves were much calmer when I didn't watch. It's high risk and high reward. It drastically changed my style. Before I got it cut, I knew I would need to improve my earring situation since my ears would be more exposed than ever and I didn't always wear makeup. So I knew I would want to utilize my gauges and my piercings to add to my short hair. Uh, something I didn't realize would happen. Short hair made me a little more daring with my style. It made me feel that I could dress in more form-fitting and sexier clothes. The sharpness of short hair is a great contrast to the soft curves of the female form. In a way, short hair liberated my style. I do follow a few rules I set for myself. I don't go out without styling my hair. It's absolutely crazy when it's not styled. And I wear earrings. This allows me to feel balanced and put together without having to wear makeup every single day. I feel I can be taken more seriously when I don't always wear makeup, plus it makes me look a little bit older without makeup. Not always something women are trying to achieve, but for me, it's my preferred look. I can look young sometimes. Also, you're automatically admitted into the women's short hair club. You start noticing other women's short hair and they notice yours. Sometimes you give each other a smile or a nod of respect to acknowledge that you're both members of the women's short hair club. Seriously though, it changed my whole world. It changed how people perceived me and how I viewed myself as well. Before the cut, my hair defined a big portion of my appearance. Just like Arantz, my hair is thick and unruly, but now my facial features, neck, and my body shape take more of the focus. Like most style books, she does have a chapter on essentials like the pencil skirt, the pumps, the white jeans, the boots, the bag, the biker jacket, the sneakers. For sneakers, her favorite are common projects, just like me. So I agree with her on that. She compares New York to Paris and there's a section called Things New Yorkers Do. I thought, watch where you step, you might upset New Yorkers, including me. I find these sections a little weird. It's tough making generalizations about whole communities of people. And as I read through it, I tried to remember this is one person's point of view and it definitely doesn't apply to all New Yorkers. Nothing was terribly offensive, so good job, Garaz. I'll let, I'll let those things go. Things that I could have done without in the book um, she writes a good bit about her personal insecurities, a subject maybe many people can relate to. And she also writes about her love life. These were two subjects I wasn't terribly interested in reading about. 
this book would appeal to maybe a younger audience, uh, maybe late teens through 20s, especially when she talks about love and her insecurities. Some good quotes from the book were, Style is a fascinating way to tune into who we are, understand who we are not, be creative, and express our inner selves. Most people don't like to be blinded by a crazy fashion item. You are the one who needs to shine. Knowing your style goes a long way. It gives you the power to communicate without saying a word. Knowing yourself is knowing the distance between your dream self and your real self. I like that this book shows an unconventional approach to getting involved in the fashion industry. One question I get all the time is how do I get into fashion later in life or as a second career? And this is a great example of someone who didn't intentionally go into fashion and she even did so later in life at a slightly older age. She studied communications in school, she didn't study fashion, and her first job was in the cinema department of a museum, not in fashion. Her first stint in fashion was as an illustrator. She started blogging in 2006 at around 31 years old. So if there is one thing you take away from this book, it should be this. There are many ways to approach the fashion industry and here's one creative way to inspire you to start your fashion journey. As Scott Schumann once said to Garance, you have to create your own definition of success. Comment below and tell me how you got involved in the fashion industry or how you plan on getting involved in the fashion in industry. Extra points for unconventional journeys. And subscribe.